Hey friends, quick video today on jacking and leveling floors and ceilings. So we have, this used to be a room, you can see where the walls used to be. They were semi-structural but not completely. Um, so I am in the, in the finishing touches of getting it totally, the ceilings totally self-supporting. Um, I've removed the walls because it was to that point. Uh, but I'm finally doing the transition between the staircase and this floor joist that I'm um, strengthening, I'm doubling up, and then also tying in this header and reinforcing it. So it's it's all, um, doesn't have to be up to code, it's just a attic loft space, and basically just needs to be safe is the main concern. So uh, we have, um, two different jacking styles. I'll show you using a hydraulic jack in a second. Right now is the very simple method of simply using a two by four or similar piece of lumber and wedges. So we have here, basically up, up above, there's a floor joist here, and then there's this header for the stairs here, and they're connecting right here. So I put a block there to kind of spread the force out of this jack post here. So that piece is not only spreading the force out, but it's also bridging between the floor joist that's here and the header, this header that's sitting right here. So it's catching both at once and then taking that, that uh, weight all the way down here to the floor. It's a concrete slab under here and I just threw a few blocks there to, to make up the difference in height because this was just a, a two by four length that was already existing. But it's at an angle. It is, it is angled like this. So I initially put it in like this and then I pounded it straight or close to straight. There you can see the angle. Um, I pounded it in straight to push up and the straighter, you know, the straighter I made it go, the higher it pushed the ceiling or that joist anyway, and header. That was to get it level because the whole thing was, this whole ceiling was sagging. I already dealt with the issue out here. Now I'm just finishing up that single joist and the header. Um, I got it up so it was as close to level and straight across as possible, considering the fact that everything is, it's all old and it's as is construction. So then the header, I needed to raise the header a little bit more. And so I used this other, post and that one was more the correct length close to the correct length already you can see it's tilted slightly this way so I got a little bit out of it out of just pounding it in but mainly the jacking action came from the fact that I put a wedge underneath that post so as I pounded the wedge in you can see it's thicker on this end than on that end as I pounded the wedge in it lifted the post so that's how I got the header to then be perfectly at the right height to match here because they were off a little bit from each other just because of a difference of where drywall was and wasn't previously. So now looking at both of those posts from above, this is the stair header. This is the, the dark joist there is the remaining joist. And then the this here is the new joist that goes all the way from exterior wall to exterior wall. And that new joist has somewhat of a crown to it. You can see there's my crown mark indicating that this edge is the one that has a crown to it like that. When you're doing structural things like this, just general purpose anyway, you want crowns to be up so that as weight is applied to that member, um, if anything, it'll push it closer to straight rather than sagging it out more. If you have it starting out sagging, then as you load it up, it's just going to sag more. But if you start with a crown and you load it up, it'll go straight or closer to it. So I put the crown up. Now I'm using a combination of jacking those posts beneath, which I've already done. So the old joist, the original joist right here is as close to level as possible, as close to straight as possible. Um, so, but you can see the difference between 
Um, obviously, there's a height difference. This is a 2x6. That's an old 2x4-ish. Um, but this, um, I need to use a, uh, a piece between because I'm, you know, I'm going between being on that side of the rafter, roof rafter, and this side. So I have that block between. It is more, it is closer to the actual height that this new joist needs to be, but you can see that height difference is significant. That's actually good. I'm using that because I'm going to use a hydraulic jack now and just use this little cleat that I put on the, this wall. I'm going to jack here and push the crown down until the top of this joist is exactly where it should be, which is going to be in line with all these other new joists. Um, we have, these are all new joists that were put in and they've been bolted to the original joists. Um, but we're making it all better and stronger. So now you get to see another method of, of jacking. Um, you can use a hydraulic jack, uh, a bottle jack as, you know, for jacking posts, like what we have in the, in the basement down there in the, in the main floor. Uh, but it's a little awkward because you have a post sitting here on this jack and any amount of sideward motion can make it kick out for one thing, but it can also make that post fall over if it gets loose at all. It can just fall over and crash down and there goes your support. So yes, you can do it, but it's just there's those factors that you have to be aware of. And so it kind of requires more hands than two to get it all set up and and stay stable and everything so i like i like what i did beneath of just using slanted posts and then i put a screw you can i, I toenailed some screws in the top and bottom so down there down there i've i've toenailed a screw in to the blocks and the blocks to the floor uh, an old bottom plate that used to be was still there from the old wall i toenailed that in i also toenailed a screw in up here so that post even if it gets loose it's not just gonna crash down and fall on somebody. It is held in place by the screws. Mainly it's held in, in place by the, all the weight that's on it right now, but it's also tacked in place by those screws if the weight were to shift at all um, or change. So now I'm gonna spread here, push this down to the right amount, and then bolt this to make it all one unit. Hey friends, I wanted to jump in here and apologize for the vertical format of this video. <laughs> um, we were filming in a friend's house and I was trying to just respect their privacy and only film the work, the actual work that I was doing. And vertical format seemed best for that um, to be kind of be able to be closer, but still show the, the full vertical range of the posts and, and stuff that I was working to using to jack up that that ceiling. This is a part of, of our vision of what we've been doing here as we tra nomadically travel through Europe, spreading sustainability everywhere we go. Um, this family, the homeowner here, is uh, someone that we met uh, in England when we were celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles with uh, a group there called Almond House Fellowship. And um, we met them and found out that they were a couple that um, had felt God calling them to move to a remote Scottish island and renovate this house. They were just doing what God told them to do, um, but in faith, picking up skills as they went along. He works mainly during the week, bringing in an income, and, sh and a lot of her focus has been doing the actual renovations, uh, but she didn't know skills to do that previously. Um, she, that wasn't what she had done in the past. And, um, so God has been teaching them as they've gone along and it's amazing the work they've done. It's, it's incredible. Um, she's basically been learning stuff off YouTube and, and, uh, going, rolling up her sleeves and getting to work on this house and, and doing an awesome job of it. When we heard what they were doing and, and we connected really well with them, um, 
we just felt like it was it was right and um, prayed and and both of us got confirmation that yeah man we're supposed to go up there and spend some time with them and it was it all worked well they gave us a place to park our caravan while we um, uh, both worked on our own businesses and things and and just spent time resting ourselves from constant travel but also I was able to help them we were able to help them with different projects around their property uh, a chief project of which though was this staircase and floor ceiling job that needed strengthened and walls taken down and staircase remodeled and all that and in the course of that I was able to teach a lot of skills and just impart you know knowledge from my experience doing construction and carpentry in the past it was neat to see how God put this opportunity together and helped two families come together and help each other and um, and teach sustainability to each other we learned things from them uh, she helped us get our kombucha uh, started again we haven't done that for years but but she gave us some scobies and materials to start our first batch with and it was fun uh, just fellowshipping with, with each other but also sharing skills with each other and uh, and spending time helping each other meaningfully on things that we were working on that's this video um we were able to uh, when we were in portugal we connected with a family there and ended up camping for on their property for a month and got to help them finish up some details in a barn for their animals um for the to be secured in the nights and during storms and stuff we helped them um, finish enclosures within that barn and we helped them with some uh some natural springs that that uh is their water source there on their hillside property but those uh the kind of the tunnels where those springs come out of out of the mountain had collapsed and uh were overgrown with a bunch of brush so um we were able to help them dig in that brush and and move a bunch of the rubble out of the way so they could get f access to their springs again and clean them up and and patch up what needed to be so they'd have clean water going again here in England, we were able to help um, a couple with their allotment space. Here in England, many people don't own property, but they have access to an allotment, which is basically renting a garden plot from the government. You have to be on a waiting list to get one of these, and once you get it, you wanna keep it. But that's how a lot of people do gardening here in the UK. And um, But we were able to help them because they're very busy. We were able to, able to help them just kind of clean up their garden beds and put them to bed for the winter with mulch and um, and just help advise on some some ways of doing things. So um, that's what we're that's part of what we're doing. One of the pieces of what we're doing, and it has been hard for us to um, put in video form. Uh, the details of what we're doing some of which need to kind of be private and some of which can be more public and so we're balancing all of that we are not trying to say that everybody should live nomadically we're not trying to say that living nomadically is necessarily sustainable in and of itself it's simply what god has told us to do during this season of life and and it ticks a lot of boxes for where we are in life and how God is working in us and teaching us things and, and opening up our opportunities for us to teach others. The fact that we are mobile and able to bring our home with us to different locations and to different communities, it opens up a lot of opportunities for the kinds of things that God is doing right now in our lives and those that he's putting in us into contact with. If you wanna watch more of our story, check out the playlist down in the description below of our nomadic traveling through Europe, spreading sustainability everywhere we go. So back to the unfortunate vertical format <laughs> and uh, finishing out of this video on different ways to jack floors and ceilings. <laughs> All right, so now with this jack in place, you can start jacking it and you can watch this gap here start to close up. See how that's, that gap is getting narrower and I'm gonna, the tops of these joists, these are getting closer to each other. I'm gonna shift over to here so we can see it more readily. Get myself, we're actually pretty close already. You can see they're close to lining up. Get ourselves in a better position here. So I'm reaching up and just operating the jack handle from down here. 
and you can see I'm pushing out the crown getting these to line up with each other almost there sorry about the shaky camera work so that's pretty close we can see by siding along these old joists along all the joists I mean they should all come in line with each other right at right at the same instant as I come down with my eye boom they should all line up right at the last second um, this one's still slightly high because the ones kind of the intermediate ones over there are disappearing from view before this new, closer one it's a little hard to see it with the camera uh, view instead of just the naked eye because of how it's trying to focus but you can hopefully get the idea of see how they're getting closer and closer to lining up I'm talking about that joist that joist that joist all the ones as they go further out we want them all to line up with each other right at the instant that any of them do so it's all pretty close. Um, I'm viewing this at a skewed angle, so it'd be ideal to go straight across, which I've done from, from this space looking that way, and going down, seeing all the joists, boom, come right into alignment right at the, at the last second. So anyway, that's how we do it. Using this jack and a cleat on the wall like that enabled me to push down on just that one member and get it perfectly in line with these others. Now I'm gonna put down the camera, use my I and get this perfectly aligned as well as put a bottom plate the new bottom plate in this wall right here I have a piece cut already to go in here so we'll get that done get the old the joists bolted together properly all the way from here all the way through to that new one right there get it all bolted through strong and we're good to go